for our Sunday morning testimonies that you sign up to share during worship. So pastoral team begins discernment each fall with prayerful thought, brainstorming, and listening for the Spirit's direction. This year, the original list was quite um, varied without a clear immediate theme. But as we listened and talked and prayed, we managed this Thursday, past Thursday to narrow it down to two texts that address strengthening unity in a church family as richly diverse as were the New Testament churches. And pastoral team authorized me to make the final selection between the Romans 12, 10 to 12 text listed in today's bulletin, which says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourself. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. And then the alternative text of 1 Thessalonians 5.11, which is actually where my spirit settled as I further developed this message. So I invite you to open your Bibles to the 1 Thessalonians 5.11 text that will shape our 2020 sharing. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are already doing. When New Testament leaders listen for their Lord's direction carefully and prayerfully, as we did, we can have confidence the text designated is not just a nice verse, not just an appropriate verse, but is the verse the Spirit of our Lord has on his mind and in his heart for us. So I boldly declare the Lord's heart for CMC in 2020 is that we would encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are already doing. That we would encourage one another and build each other up. Now, I don't presume to know why these words capture our Lord's heart for us in 2020, nor do I presume to know what he will stir you to share in our testimony time regarding who of you felt, who you felt called to encourage, or how others blessed you, building up your faith. But I look forward to witnessing how God will indeed delight us beyond our expectations. So without knowing why, God led us to this text. Here are several hints we can already see in this theme verse. First, the final words align with a CMC reality. In fact, you are already doing this ministry of encouragement. I regularly hear testimony that someone came alongside another when they needed a word of blessing rallied to help when they needed God in the flesh to help them move, volunteered to dry them to a doctor's appointment, planned a senior connection that softened the isolation they were feeling, prepared once again a Sunday school lesson, or led our children in song that affirms they are loved of God. Our bulletin affirms what our financial report will reveal. CMC members even open up their wallets, their bank accounts, to generously support our mission and ministries that encourage so many and build up so much of God's kingdom. So the ways, the list of the ways you are in fact already doing ministries of encouragement to build one another up go on and on in their creativity and their sacrifice. So if we're already doing it, why might the Lord want us to hear it anew? Well, maybe so we not back off. Or maybe because in our distorted humility, 
we think, well, of course I help people and encourage them, but that's not significant. What I really should be learning, doing is learning how to teach like a Los Ann teaches or preach like a Bob preaches. Then I'd be important. Or maybe I ought to make more money so my tithe check could match what others are obviously giving. Or maybe I ought to be a more effective witness so that hundreds come to faith every time I open my mouth. Then I'd be impacting the kingdom. Maybe we discredit the transformative difference a word of encouragement can make in the life of another person. Or maybe what the Lord most has in mind for you is in the first words of the verse. The encourage one another and build each other up more than the affirmation you're already doing it. Maybe, maybe you've been wounded or violated by a brother or a sister in Christ and you've slipped into the comfort of bitterness. Maybe you are now profoundly aware of how much others in Christ's body fall short of his glory and you're tempted to be done with the messiness of a church family. Or maybe the temptation it's the same, but in the opposite direction of focus. Maybe you are newly aware of your own sin, your own vulnerability. Maybe you're tempted right now to despise yourself. And rather than turning to the Lord to admit how much you need His grace, and turning to those you've let down and confessing you need their help, maybe instead of grabbing hold of forgiveness and grace and standing in the promise that Christ quickly forgives and restores, cleanses and heals, maybe you are instead spiraling toward dark despair and self-hatred as a tempting new identity. So for those who fit these descriptions, the words encourage one another and build each other up might be our Lord's way of reminding us he already knows you're not perfect. He understands we need to be strengthened. We're not yet fully strong. Our Lord is not surprised by our tendency to track towards sin. Yet our Lord loves us so deeply he entered into the mess of this human condition in order for the mess to not define believer's destiny. So, while saving, cleansing, and restoring us, he also knows we need strengthening, and he knows we will be strengthened as we encourage others and build them up. That's one of the profound ways God has gifted to us to be strengthened. This is good news because nothing gives us greater dignity when we are weak than to discover we were able to help another even out of our imperfection. Nothing gives us greater worth in the face of our own brokenness than to ask for and to experience God's Spirit empowering us, flowing through us, such that we can act in kindness even in the face of another's hatred or their confusion or their reactive fear. So I don't know what all is on God's heart for us from this theme verse, but I sure look forward to discovering it with you. So let us enter this new year in faith that God will be honored as we encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are already doing one of the reasons we begin each new year with the covenant renewal service is because it's easier to embrace the new that God has for us 
if we've done our part to clean up the wounds and the warts and the ways we fell short in the past year. So I would invite you to turn with me now to the bulletin insert, the yellow paper. We start with a litany that uh, thanks God for sending us Jesus and redeeming us. And then together we acknowledge him as Lord and we speak words of renewing our covenant to walk together. Then I lead in confessing that with all God's children we too fall short. And together with the dark print we confess that yes, there's times we fell short, but praise God. We also see that God worked in and through us. Then the hard part of recognizing we're called to forgive, to receive it, and to extend it. And we put into words the declaration, we seek and speak forgiveness in Jesus' name. The reality is, depending how deeply we've been offended, there are times we can only declare forgiveness as an act of obedience. And the feeling and the readiness to fully forgive takes time and comes over time with lots of declaration. And I say again, forgiveness does not mean you have to act like you weren't wounded. Doesn't mean you have to pretend it wasn't offensive. Doesn't mean you have to interact with the person as if they didn't harm you, if they haven't taken responsibility. It simply means you're trusting God to be better at judging the matter than what you are. And so you're handing the role of judgment over to your Lord. Right after that, then we move into our opportunity as Sharon plays um, ministry music, opportunity to come forward, um, running the matters we want to release, that's on the back side, you write down things you want to release from the past year, to run through the shredder is another symbolic way of letting it go. Um, Nelson and Marilyn will be um, over here offering ministry and anointing, prayer for anyone who would like to be prayed for. And everyone is welcome at the communion table where um, there are these um, um, symbols of our Lord's broken body, broken for you, that you can um, pick up, dip in the um, cup, the symbol of his shed blood and receive it. We have in past years encouraged you when you're at the table and I'm going to encourage it again to um, if it seems appropriate turn to someone who is also there and just shake their hand smile at them give them a word of blessing offer if you want to Give them a hug, go like this, and if they respond, you can give them a hug. Don't just take them in and embrace if they're, if they're not open to it. You offer. And if they're receptive, then you, know, then you can embrace. So some form of um, you know, encouraging each other, even as we're receiving the broken body and the shed blood of our Lord. So at any time, you can be writing down matters. But at this time, let's... Um, Go through the litany together. Lord God, thank you for sending Jesus to us as Lord and Savior. Through his faithfulness, even through death on the cross, you call us to be your people. Thank you that Christ redeemed us to live his story in obedience to your word and your ways. Together, we acknowledge you as Lord. We praise you for redeeming us. We renew our covenant to walk together as a people of faith. Today, we confess that with all your children, we too fall short of your glory. We acknowledge, Lord Jesus, that the past year included times both of pain and celebration that touched us all. Have mercy on us for our contributions to the pain. Deepen our healing. Keep us trusting in you 
according to your unfailing love. Together, we confess that in 2019 there were times we fell short of your glory. We also celebrate the ways you empowered us to partner with you in living Christ's story joyfully. So, Lord Jesus, your word clearly commands us to accept, to ask forgiveness of any we've wronged and to extend forgiveness to all who have wronged us. In obedience to your word and in gratitude for your generous forgiveness to us, we commit to seeking and speaking forgiveness in Jesus' name. Together, we seek and speak forgiveness in Jesus' name. So, so now in these uh, moments of silence, I invite, we invite you, Lord God, to bring to mind all with whom we yet need to make confession or to offer forgiveness.